Roberto, the Insect Architect by Nina Laden. Roberto, the Insect Architect by Nina Laden. Even when Roberto was little, he went against the grain. Like most termites, he melted over maple and pined for pine. Oak was okay, too. But Roberto didn't eat his food. He played with it. You're wasting a good meal, his mother said. Don't you know there are termites starving in Antarctica? But Roberto didn't answer. He was busy daydreaming about becoming a famous architect. Roberto builds first house on the moon. Whoever heard of a termite who wanted to be an architect? The other termite snickered. Roberto, you should be a chef. But Roberto didn't want to cook. He wanted to build. Hungry to start a new life, Roberto realized he had to leave. So Roberto packed his bags and took the train to Bug Central Station in the busy, buzzing hive of the big city. The city was a place where you could build your dreams. It was a place where you would be accepted. It was a place where the other termites wouldn't bug you. Roberto beamed up like a lit up skyscraper. But hope didn't come cheap. In the big city, neither did a place to live. Roberto had no choice but to rent a room in a flea bag hotel run by a nervous tick. He shared the room with a family of bedbugs. Roberto introduced himself. Then he built the bedbugs their very own beds. After a good night's sleep, Roberto began to look for work as an architect, but things didn't go very well. Show me what you've done, said the architect, Hank Floyd Might. There are no termites in my houses, stated Fleas Vanderell. I'm busy, Antonia Gaudi blurted out. Don't bug me. As Roberto crawled from fe home, feeling like a pest, he would sideswipe by a fly. Watch where you're going, he mumbled. The fly started to cry. But I don't have any place to go, she lamented. Roberto wanted to comfort her, but he was nearly nailed by a carpenter ant trying to fix a rickety shed. Then out of nowhere, Roberto was almost run over by a stampede of roaches being chased from a diner. And suddenly, a frantic ladybug blew into his arms. My house is on fire and my children are gone, the ladybug cried. Roberto could see that he wasn't the only bug with problems. In fact, his problems didn't seem so big after all. Roberto wished he could do something for the others, but what could one termite do? A lot of damage, Fleas van der Rohe had told him. I'll show old fleas what this termite can do. I'll show them all, said Roberto. Back at the hotel, Roberto came up with a plan. First, he drew up some blueprints. He sketched houses and streets. He sketched stores and playgrounds. By the time he was finished, he had sketched an entire neighborhood. Now I just need to find a good location, he declared. Roberto searched all over the city for the perfect site. He finally found an abandoned, run-down block of crumbling buildings. It was a total mess. There were piles of old wood and garbage everywhere. It was just what he was looking for. Robert hammered and nailed. He sawed and sanded. He worked day and night. Like a magician, he transformed the block of junk into a street of extraordinary homes. Each one was a work of art.
but Roberto didn't sign his artwork. Instead, he anonymously sent keys to the new owners. Then he rolled up his plans and went home. Some very surprised bugs went home, too. Tudor, the fly with no place to go, buzzed with delight. I'm a housefly again, she declared. Then Grant, the carpenter ant, arrived. He dropped his tool belt on the porch. Now I can have a real workshop, he beamed. The roaches were the next ones on the scene. You won't find us sleeping in salads anymore, they rejoiced. Finally, Dottie the ladybug and her children moved into their new lair. It's perfect, she sighed. It's fireproof. Quickly, word spread. Soon, everyone wanted to know who built these amazing abodes. Rumors were flying, antennae were buzzing. Barbara Waterbugs wanted an exclusive interview. Robin Leach promised to make the builder rich and famous. Stephen Shieldbug wanted the movie rights. Diane Spider searched the World Wide Web for the scoop. And the Insect Inquirer offered a reward to the first bug who brought the builder to light. All day long, bounty-hunting butterflies took wing, paper wasps swarmed the streets, bold weevils crawled out of the woodwork. But late at night, a click beetle got the shot. The next morning, headlines screamed the news. Termite chips new homes out of old blocks. It's Roberto, Tudor hummed. He's our hero! Overnight, Roberto became the talk of the town. Architects offered him jobs, book publishers wanted his story, ladybugs sent him love letters, and his big buddies threw him a big bash. At the height of the party, the mayor unveiled a statue of Roberto to be placed in the city park. Roberto built his dream. He opened his own company and became the most famous architect in the insect world. Students studied him in school. Some of his houses even became museums. But best of all, when little termites play with their food, now their parents say, be creative. Maybe someday you'll grow up to be just like Roberto. Extra, Roberto builds first house on Mars. <laughs>